I have the gift of catharsis for you, my good friends, this morning. It is an article from The Intercept, furious, angry, that left wing voices are being silenced on Twitter as far right trolls advise Elon Musk. To my good friends on the left who are upset that violent extremists are now being suspended, I have one thing to say to you. From a place of privilege, equality looks like oppression. You see, what's happening now is that these Antifa accounts are being suspended because they break the rules. They advocate for violence. They teach people how to commit violence, and they're being removed because of it. This is called equality. Elon Musk has been suspending Antifa accounts that engage in violent rhetoric, behavior, etc. And now they're mad. And they're saying, Andy, no, it's his fault. Elon Musk is just doing whatever he wants. Oh, yeah. I got a story to show you about exactly what's going on with censorship on Twitter, because it is. Let's be real. A lot of people want to take the word censorship and immediately apply a negative context, saying that it, it, it rejects free speech. No, no, no. Censorship isn't always bad. If someone goes online and starts posting child exploitation, you want that censored. It's illegal. If somebody goes on and says, go commit X against person Y or whatever, you want that censored. Someone's got to go and moderate however it's done and remove it. What we don't like, and when we talk about censorship, we're usually the free speech people. We're referring to when someone expresses a political opinion. Some of them may be distasteful. Some of them may be mainstream. And then Twitter comes in and removes them. And they say stuff like, if you, if you say to vote for Trump, you're a fascist, you should be banned or whatever. You're not, you're not allowed to misgender people. You, you have to believe what we believe. And I, I would warn you in that regard, anybody who can't have a conversation around, about, about their ideas is not the kind of person who should be wielding power. If, if you're going to be on Twitter and you're going to say, here's what I think, and then someone responds, well, here's what I think. Nope, shut them down. Yeah, we should not see those people ever gain power, hopefully. But here's the story, and then I'll give you a real example. But uh, let this be cathartic, my friends. They say left-wing voices are being silenced on Twitter as far-right trolls advise Elon Musk. Elon Musk claims to be fighting for free speech in America, but the social network's new owner appears to be overseeing a purge of left-wing activists on the platform. <gasps> Several prominent anti-fascist organizers and journalists have had their accounts suspended in the past week after right wing operatives appealed directly to Musk to ban them and far right Internet trolls flooded Twitter's complaint system with false reports about terms of service violations. How would you like it if I were to show you legitimate rule violations from the left that they were going to go? You know, I'll just put it this way. Everybody knows by, by now I've brought it up. It was on Joe Rogan's show and uh, at the at, at at the end of the episode, uh, Vijaya Gada asked me about this Antifa account I had mentioned that was advocating for and inciting violence. And I said, I'm not going to point you to it because I'm not here to, to be a rule enforcer or whatever. And then they claimed I was colluding with Twitter to ban the left or whatever. So dumb. But during the show, we highlighted a Twitter account that was advocating for violence and they wouldn't remove it. It was instructing people when and how, what to do. And they didn't remove it. So weird. How about that? So let's read. They write, as the Los Angeles City Council member Mike Bonin noted on Twitter, the suspended users include Chad Loader, an anti-fascist researcher whose open source investigation of the U.S. Capitol riot led to the identification and arrest of a masked proud boy who attacked police officers. The account of video journalist Vishal Pratap Singh, who reports on far right protests in Southern California, has also been suspended. Sorry. You will get no benefit of the doubt from me, especially when you see this. Among the other prominent accounts suspended were the Elm Fork John Brown Gun Club. Oh, I don't know about Elm Fork. I do know that there was a member of the John Brown Gun Club who went to an ICE location and firebombed it. Now, OK, fair point. The actions of that individual do not reflect on this organization. But my point is this. I don't trust you. You've gotten away with far worse so you will get no reprieve from me. They say it's an anti-fascist group that provides armed security for LGBTQ plus events in North Texas. And Crime Think, an anarchist collective that has published and distributed anarchist and anti-authoritarian zines, books, posters, and podcasts since the mid-1990s. Oh, could it be that 
in the in the zines, they advocate for and instruct on how to commit acts of sabotage and violence. All four accounts had been singled out for criticism by Andy No, a far right writer whose conspiratorial error riddled reporting on left wing protests and social movements fuels the mass delusion that a handful of small anti-fascist groups are part of an imagine, imaginary shadow army called Antifa. I, I love how they say that when they wear s- symbols of anti-fascist action. The, uh, this is the Weimar Germany Communist Party militant group. They wave the flags. They've outright called themselves this. The guy who firebombed the ICE facility, he said he was Antifa. And then when you're like, he said he was Antifa, there's no Antifa. What are you talking about? Yet uh, Ben Collins go on NBC, I think it was, and say Antifa, referring to, to these people. And then what do they say online? There's no such thing as Antifa because it's a cult and they're psychotic individuals. They're dangerous and they're violent. And this is them panicking because, oh, no, Elon Musk is finally, finally coming in and cleaning up the garbage. Andy knows bizarre version of Antifa seems to be the metric used to delete the accounts of blah, 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 blah. Hey, here's a story. Man armed with screwdriver barricades himself, attempts to burn down auto shop. Huh. Well, that's it. Authorities have arrested a man after he barricaded himself in an auto shop and set part of the building on fire. Linwood, Washington. Now, you may be saying to me, what what is what is this and why should I care? Oh, here's a picture on the screen. What's that? It says Tesla. It's a Tesla location in Linwood, Washington. Washington, of course, which is very heavy in Antifa activity. But hey, How am I supposed to know that any of this is related? Maybe it's not. But um, there were a whole bunch of Antifa people on Twitter calling for violence against Elon Musk and Tesla because he was removing their accounts. So uh, a Tesla location, a guy shows up, barricades himself inside and then sets part of the building on fire. Why would he do that? Why would why would this random thing happen? Oh, here's a post from Andy No. He says last night next to the Tesla in Linwood, a suspect threatened police with a crowbar and said he would blow up the building. He then started a fire next to propane tanks. No confirmed motive so far, but Antifa had urged arson against Tesla and are praising the violent attack. Here's one tweet from a guy in uh, Portland. Someone in Linwood, Washington, went to the Tesla service center last night and allegedly set it on fire uh, only after allegedly threatening the pigs with a crowbar and getting tased. They had to call in SWAT, effing legend. Here's the police press release. They left out the fact it was at a Tesla site. Interestingly, they did. Even the reporting here from Como 4 News, it says auto shop, but you can see the Tesla sign right there. In it, they just say a Linwood auto shop or whatever. Now, why are they not saying that it's a Tesla shop? I wonder. Could it be that far left extremists have been advocating for this and they're scared about reporting that detail because it would imply that far left terrorists are engaging in acts of terror and then there'd have to be some kind of federal or state level response and that's not going to happen? If the media came out and said, following a series of threats from far left extremists against Tesla locations, a Tesla location was attacked you'd think people might demand an investigation. But okay, an auto shop? Seriously, Como? It's Tesla. It's like one of the most iconic things in auto right now. So couldn't you just say a Tesla shop? How interesting. That's the case. And Andy No points this out, as he had before with many other people. And they're upset that they are now being called to account. And they go on to say, blah, blah, blah. This Chad Loader guy goes on to Mastodon. And then he shows the, the baby Yoda. Elon Musk is the Mandalorian. Andy you knows the baby Yoda. And he says, censor them. Censor them. Yeah, um, he is saying censor them. And I'm, I'm OK with that. If you advocate for violence, instruct people to commit violence, you should have a, a censor should say that and say, look at that and say that that's criminal. We're going to take that down. I'm not a free speech absolutist. I'm just more uh, interested in free speech than they are. Free speech absolutism is quite literally what it means. Absolute. Now, Elon Musk says he is. He's not. Free speech absolutism. I've argued with people on this before. They say that you can incite violence because just saying words is not the action itself. You should you can say whatever you want. You're hurting nobody. 
And there is an interesting argument to be made about free speech absolutism in that if we argue, and we do, and I have, that thing, advocating for things that are illegal, or, or I should say advocating uh, for people to commit crimes, should not be, incitement is illegal, therefore it should be censored. Well, then you need only a legislative body to determine that, uh, or a court, other speech, hate speech, is also illegal. You see the problem? The reason we say incitement shouldn't be, uh, is not free speech, is that it doesn't, it, it doesn't express a, a, a sentiment, ideology, or whatever, but others argue that it does. That you think certain people or certain individuals should suffer consequences for the things they've done, the ideas they hold, is your opinion. You didn't actually go and do anything. But then I wonder about telling someone to do it. So here's the argument. At that point, I feel like you're actively involved in the crime. It's, it's planning stages. It's, it's conspiratorial. Like, hey, hey, you should go do this thing. Some argue, though, that the person who listens can choose not to commit the crime. And you actually didn't in, in impose yourself upon anybody other than express that someone should do a thing. And thus, if the government can determine that certain speech is illegal, then there's no First Amendment anyway. And that's more of the procedural argument. The, 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 the First Amendment says Congress shall pass no law abridging the freedom of speech, etc. But what about the courts? And they have. And if they have, then how is there a First Amendment at all? Interesting point. The Supreme Court just basically interpreted it to be, look, free speech is supposed to be about you expressing yourself. And some might say, yeah, and I feel that someone should be accosted or something like that. So I understand the free speech absolutist argument. However, I do think that there are just moral lines across the board. And my line is not you shouldn't be able to go online and dox people and threaten them. Like those things are wrong, even criminal harassment. And that's to be determined by. And this is another challenge. Clearly, online behavior can cross into criminal harassment. And I'm not talking about criticizing someone or saying naughty words. I'm talking about po posting their location, constantly uh, sending them harassing messages, things like. I know where you are. I'm outside the Starbucks. Like these are things that aren't expressing your opinion. You're basically just harassing someone. What ends up happening is the far left says that you're harassing somebody if you criticize them. And we've seen it in Canada and other European countries. You get banned for it. You can even get arrested in some places. Here we go. No longer viable. Whatever the reason for the suspension, Loader said that it's clear. Twitter is no longer a viable platform for anti-fascist and security researchers. I love how they call themselves that. If I get my account back, Loader said, it's only a matter of time before I get mass reported again. Maybe it's because you're breaking the rules. I love it. Y'all ready for this one? Senator Scott Weiner? I mean, I could say Weiner, but I do think it's Weiner. I'm not trying to say that to be mean, but people, you know, are going to you're going to say it. I hope you're ready for this one. Jesse Smollett 2.0. 87.0. What am I kidding? Senator Scott Weiner says, not even 24 hours after MAGA grifter Charlie Kirk tweeted homophobic lies about me, I received this threat repeating one of his lies. But that was the point. Riling people up against me and other LBG, uh, LGBTQ people. Words have consequences, and Twitter is becoming a cesspool for this crap. I want to just point out two things in the threat that he received. The cursor... And the spell check or the grammar check, implying he wrote it. I love it. In response to people pointing out that it's a screenshot of statements that he wrote, he, he added, for all the MAGA conspiracy theorists out there, the threat was a voicemail. This is a transcription. But have fun spinning around with your conspiracies. It, it's, it's, it's not a conspiracy, my dude. It is an accusation of impropriety. No one is accusing you of colluding with any group behind the scenes for unethical behavior. They're saying you just lied. Calling you a liar isn't a conspiracy. So if he really did have a voicemail saying this, wouldn't he just post the audio like everybody else? No, he didn't. I mean, maybe he will. I'm not saying it's definitive that uh, 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 he didn't receive this threat. But everyone's basically calling him Jussie, saying, dude, you wrote this one out. So you got a voicemail and then you carefully transcribed that voicemail to put into a text post. Now, who does that? Either way, this is what they do. They lie, they cheat and they steal. Now, to be fair, maybe he really did get a voicemail. Sure. Some people are posting now. Uh, what, there was one joke where they said, 
uh, you know, bet dollars to donuts that he's on Fiverr saying, you know, looking for someone to record this audio and send it to me so that he can be like, look, here it is. I think he faked it. I think this guy made it up. This is the game they play. I don't know what Charlie Kirk said about him, but I can tell you this. I personally have an issue with groomers and uh, groomers specifically refers to people trying to introduce children to or, or, or let me just put it this way. In the context for which I present it, when I say groomer, I'm speaking literally about an individual, an adult, who is trying to introduce children into sexual things. And they groom them into accepting that lifestyle. And uh, what, I, what I mean by that is sexually illegal, inappropriate, etc. Right? That they're trying to get children to do things that otherwise children would not do and are in fact illegal. That's what I'm referring to. Uh, in, in no way am I referring to LGBTQ people. Uh, that, that's patently absurd. Uh, several friends of the show and frequent guests are LGBTQ people. How does that make sense that we have Dave Rubin on the show and he's like, I'm raising kids. And I'm like, that's really great, Dave. Congratulations. He's got two kids. I'm, I'm, I'm ha- happy to hear it. Happy, happy for him. Uh, I am not a staunch conservative who takes strong issue with uh, uh, same-sex marriage or anything like that. A lot of conservatives do. A lot of conservatives came out and were critical of, of, of Dave Rubin for, for having kids. Not me. I think two parents are fantastic. In fact, Dave Rubin is an extremely intelligent, smart guy, and I'm fairly certain his kids are going to be brilliant. Now, you can criticize Dave Rubin for a lot of things, of course. You can criticize me for a lot of things. I don't think anybody's perfect. I know people have their beef with Dave, but he's a very successful and intelligent person, and I've met his husband, and I think it's great. Um, none of my business. I think, I think their kids will turn out very well. That's not grooming. I have no beef with that. But this is the lie. They try to come out and just falsely frame it because it's a cult. It's a cult of clout chasing grifters. They lie because they want power. Why would this guy make up a fake story? Well, presuming it's fake, because they lie and they want power. They want to trick regular people into believing that they're the poor victims. Look, man, Nobody should be threatening you like this. Nobody should say these things to you. I'm going to read it. It's ridiculous. But I'm sorry. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. Andy No gets threats all the time. He had to flee where he lived because they're trying to kill him. They try to do the same thing here. You know, and I'll let you guys in on a secret. We do not report all of the swattings anymore. And uh, if we did, I'd be tweeting about it a lot. But we have armed guards and we get notified every time the swattings happen. They don't impact us. But these are threats upon our lives. And I'm not tweeting about it. Maybe that's the problem, though. You see, maybe the tactic they use, maybe I should just post all of it every single time. You know what I'm told? I'm told by law enforcement and security, if you do that, it will make it worse. Really? It will? Then why do these people do it all the time? Why is Senator Scott Wiener posting this typing it out himself and then saying, look what they're saying to me. Is, is his security not warning him that by doing this, it will increase the threat against him? This is the game, isn't it? That I'm told if we get threatened, when we get threatened, do not repeat it. You know, I had an argument with Ian about it. Ian's getting on angry, like, stop talking about it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I think when, when I think people should know this stuff happens to us. So here's what happens. They do this on purpose because regular people who aren't paying attention then get a narrative crafted in their mind that the right is evil and extremists. In the meantime, or at the same time, channels like mine are warned not to bring it up lest it get worse. So what happens? In the public view, if you're a regular person who doesn't pay attention to politics, you go on Twitter. What do you see? All of these leftists posting these threats against them and none of the right doing it because we're told we shouldn't. And that pisses me off. So what are we supposed to do? I certainly understand it could make it worse. Some people say, oh, don't chase the drama. You can, people on the right certainly criticize Scott Wiener for, for, I mean, it looks like he faked it to be completely honest. But I've got audio recordings of the swattings of what they said and how they said it and what it is. Maybe we should. Oh no, but if you release it, then, then the law enforcement can't do their job fair point, then why are they doing it? Dude, I'll tell you this, man. These people are just making this stuff up and they're getting away with it. I really doubt for the most part, the threats are real. 
because conservatives sit around on their hands and live in the middle of nowhere and don't go to cities. And, you know, my this is MAGA country in Chicago at three in the morning and freezing cold temperatures. Spare me. It never happened. But us, we have it on camera. The dog, the, 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 the sniffing dog coming in. Granted, it wasn't like big city cops. It's like sheriff's department stuff. On video, we kept the stream rolling for this reason. You will not claim it didn't happen. We were forced to evacuate because of a, a, a credible bomb threat. A, legit, credible. And they come in and you can see them on camera sniffing around and doing their thing. The first time it happened, the cops actually walked in the room while we were alive. So what do we do? Do I just, oh, I'll tell you this, we got swatted like a week ago. Nobody knows because we don't want it to happen. So we don't talk about it. Maybe, I think maybe it was like a week or two ago. We got swatted. Oh, actually, that's right. It was a, we had, we had a guest on. Hmm, how about that? Um, we got swatted. And it's like the 14th or 15th. I, I, I lost count. Security guard messages us. I'll get a message during the show being like, it ha it's happening again. And we're like, we got it. And um, this puts uh, restrictions on, on, on how we can operate here. That's their goal. They come out and they say, that Elon Musk is siding with the right. And I will stress it again, the most important point. The reason people believe it is because the right will not tell people when they're being threatened. People on the right should just post all of it. When you get a death threat, post it, because that's what the left does. And then maybe people finally start to understand that these people are psychotic terrorists. But if you don't show the swattings, if you don't show the messages, the public sphere will only show the Jesse Smollett's and will never show the Michael Reynolds. And that's the important distinction. Jesse Smollett made it up. Michael Reynolds shot and killed a Trump supporter who was just walking down the street. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.